If I needed to scratch my elbow, why, I could reach over and scratch my elbow. Or I can invent a device that when I pressed a button would trigger a chain reaction of events culminating in an electric motor activating some sort of elbow scratcher that would scratch my elbow. If you find this to be an overly complicated method of cubital cutaneous excoriation, then why are you okay with the fact that your car, like every other car in production today, has a bi-wire throttle? The primary way to control the output of a gasoline engine is using a throttle. The simplest way to actuate that throttle is to have a cable or linkage from the throttle pedal to the throttle. At some point in the last 20 or so years, every car has transitioned to drive by wire. And what this means is that the right pedal is connected to a potentiometer, a dimmer switch. On the throttle itself is an electric motor that you'd think would just open or close the throttle in response to your request. But that's not what happens. And if that were all a bi-wire throttle could do, it would be absurd to replace a simple cable with complicated sensors, wires, computers, and motors. As usual, there's a very simple explanation. If you give a computer ultimate control over the throttle opening, you can start aggregating different features, meaning manufacturers can actually reduce parts, complexity, and cost. Take for example, cruise control. Used to be that cruise control required some sort of device to compare your requested speed to your actual speed, whether that was a computer or some other device. And then a separate throttle cable and then some sort of actuator that pulled on the throttle cable. Once the throttle is controlled directly by the computer, you can throw all that other crap out because cruise control just becomes a couple lines of computer code. Same thing with a rev limiter. Why have a distributor with a centrifugal limiter or a fuel pump relay with a rev limiter built in or a fuel injection computer that figures out how to cut power without blowing up the engine? Just close the throttle. And another thing, idle speed, which was always a pain to manage. Fuel injection systems used to have idle air circuits that bypass the throttle for fine tuning the engine speed or raising it when the engine was cold. Now, Computer just adjusts it with the throttle. Traction control is another surprise benefit. Sure, you can add brakes to stop a spinning wheel, but that's a recipe for a small barbecue when your engine is sending 700 horsepower back there. So the computer easily cuts engine power, again, just by closing the throttle. That is all the simple stuff, but there's so much more you'd never think of. Here's an example. Lift off the throttle at high revs in the snow and you'll lock up your drive wheels from the engine drag. Not in a modern car, because the computer can just open the throttle to limit engine braking without even injecting any fuel. You didn't even notice it happen, but stability control avoided the skid before it even started, rather than needing to correct it afterward. That's Here's another one. You're cruising down the road at 70 miles an hour in top gear. Engines humming along at like 10% load. That's a very inefficient mode because most engines operate at their most efficient at or near wide open throttle. That's a different episode. Without you even realizing it, the engine computer can start to reduce the maximum power available at that engine speed by retarding ignition timing, changing cam timing, and leaning out the mixture. To compensate, it can simultaneously open the throttle further and further. This reduces pumping losses and puts the engine in that far more efficient state of wide open throttle. You notice nothing except you've gone a couple more miles on that gallon of gas. On the opposite end of the spectrum from cruising, we have driving like a maniac. Let's say you're in a turbocharged car approaching the exit of a corner and you're progressively squeezing on the gas just like your track instructor told you. Rather than get nothing, nothing, boost, and then way too much power, when you first hit the pedal, the computer can momentarily crack the throttle wide open, sending a burst of air down the exhaust to pre-spin the turbo. And then, when the boost starts building, it can start pulling throttle out so you get only what you asked for, not more. This happens all the time in turbocharged cars, and you can actually hear it happening in a Porsche 911. Throttle control is also how rev matching works with manual transmissions, and why your automatic can shift so smoothly. It just closes the throttle and cuts power during the shift. 
And speaking of automatics, modern cars with automatic transmissions have a new name for the right pedal. You can call it a gas pedal, but you're not actually asking for gas. You can call it a throttle pedal, but you're not actually asking for throttle. Or you could call it an accelerator pedal, but you're not actually always asking for acceleration. No, when you press the right pedal, you're actually requesting torque at the wheels. And since your foot isn't actually connected to anything but the computer, the computer receives your torque request, then decides how to produce that torque as efficiently as possible. So it might choose sixth gear, open torque converter, wide open throttle, max boost, rich mixture, tons of valve overlap, and moderate ignition advance. Or it could decide to go into fifth gear. Oh, but then it would be in that rev range where it has a nasty resonance. Hmm. No, so instead it chooses fourth gear with lock torque converter running lean under no boost at only a third throttle, which gets the exact same result at the wheels while burning less fuel and making less noise. Hmm. Throw in a turbo or two and a hybrid system with electric motors and an electric supercharger and the calculus to get you the torque you've asked for could be 20 variables, all changing a couple dozen times a second. And that, whether you're in the middle of a stability control managed drift or half paying attention with full adaptive cruise control on, sitting back and scratching your elbow. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to figure out how in the world I'm going to scratch my ass. Not an idiot. You know how this stuff works. Like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to check out the Haggerty Drivers Club.